Welcome back to the Forensics Detailing Channel. The beard has been trimmed. What's left of the hair was combed over. I can see it sticking back up again now, never mind. So that can only mean one thing, that we're partnering up. So today's video is a proud sponsorship with the Italian tool makers, Rupes, who have a special interest in machine polishing. And today we're gonna to be showing you their DA kits, which provide you with a complete end-to-end -end solution for all polishing applications, primarily around dual action polishers though. Okay guys, let's get stuck into this. So before we get started on the kits and what you're getting and how you use them and why they're of benefit and what there is to explore and all that sort of stuff, a little bit of info on Rupes. Rupes. So this Italian company, they're also based in America, manufacture their power tools in-house and have been doing so for many, many years. They've got a wide, vast range of tooling, but we're particularly interested in what they popularized and that's the long throw dual action polisher range with that LHR 15 in particular, which is on its Mark III iterations now, but also their mini dual action polisher, the LHR 75, the three inch mini, and also their hybrid nano tool, which they kind of innovated, the first micro nano polisher that's cordless as well. So they've given us lots of unique things over the years. And as well as having this range of tools, their range of pads, and now abrasives can be paired up to their polishing system, but also other tooling. So if you have a standard eight millimeter throw dual action polisher with a five inch plate, you can use these kits with your existing polisher. Let's move on to what you get in the kits. Okay, the first kit, the DA Course. Now the important thing, all of these kits come in two variants, the 150 mil variant, and the 180 mil variant. Now, the 150 mil variant, Rupes are giving you the measurement of the face of the pad, which is wider than the fitment of the pad. So the fitment of the pad is 125 mil, which mounts onto a standard five inch plate. So 99% of the people nowadays polishing are gonna want the 150 mil kits, but be aware there is the 180 mil variant for all three. So, the DA Blue, you get one liter of coarse, aggressive cutting compound, which is designed for major defect removal to give you maximum cut for applications where you have heavy swirls or sandy marks on hard paintwork. And your goal, really, is to try and minimize the amount of cutting sets you have to do on a car, because every set that you do on an entire car has to be multiplied, doesn't it, for each little area you're working on. So each additional set creates a massive time overhead. So big hammer, heavy defects, harder paintwork. Now, with the more aggressive compound becomes more aggressive pads. So in this kit, you get two types of pads. You get a wool pad and you get a foam pad. John, which one should I use? Well, the whole purpose of the kit is to get you to sample both of them so you can decide which one is best for your particular application. What are the advantages and disadvantages of wool? Well, first up, wool is smoother for me over the panel. It doesn't stick so much to the panel. It won't stall out the machine so much. It will move freer over the surface of the panel. It's supposed to also reduce heat buildup, so less chance of getting kind of buffer trailing for rotary application, but but even keeping the temperatures down for dual action application. Okay, what are the disadvantages of wool application? It's a bit harder to clean out the pad, so you can, it's easier to clean up the surface of a foam pad with a brush. This typically is easier to clean out if you've got compressed air to hand, which most people at home haven't. Although you can clean these out with brushes, you're still gonna be swapping out pads and then needing to clean out your wool pads at the end of each particular day. I also find it slightly hard to edge accurately with wool pads. So you can almost see the edging when you, where the polish is going a bit clearer with foam pads. Um, because these spin over the paintwork freer and introduce less heat, you can generally crank up a little bit better and it's a smoother experience. Historically, wall pads will also introduce more hazing from the actual pad material itself. So wool historically adds more hazing, although there are different grades of wool that can actually deliver you a, fine, a finer 
final finish as well. And they're in some of the kits further down the line. So that's a little quick summary on wool. You have to try them to decide, which is the purpose of this kit. You also get a sample of their microfiber cloth, again, which is color coded for removing their coarser compound. Now, coarser, more aggressive compounds are a bit stiffer over the panel, they require more working, that's why the panels are stiffer, uh, sorry, the pads are stiffer, so you can apply more pressure, you can run at higher speeds, but the abrasive compounds are typically a little bit harder to buff off of the panel as well, so they require a little bit more force. So they've got a specific cloth for removing a very aggressive compound. There is also, in the kits that I've got, a sticker on there saying free gift inside, and inside I there was a Rupes, um, claw which is a tool for cleaning out your pad after each set and a small plastic you know blunt blade on it for helping you remove the pad off of the polisher without pulling on it and um you know potentially damaging the pad so that's quite a nice free gift i'm not sure if they, these free gifts will be in your particular um offering but they're in this one so if it's got the sticker with a free gift on it you're going to get the free claw they also have an application that you can go to, you can scan it here and it will take you there, where it can help you pick the product for your particular scenario, your car, your what you're trying to achieve, and it can recommend one of their systems on how best to get from A to B with results. So that is the blue course kit. Let's move on to the next one now. So the DA Fine Kit, or the Yellow Kit, this contains what I call a mid-range abrasive. So this is gonna be a slightly less aggressive mid-level product, which is still designed to cut, remove swirls, stuff like that, even lighter sanding marks. You could use this for what we call a single stage where you wanna just go in one set, one hit, one kill, polish your car and deliver you a final finish as well. So it's gonna break down and give you a higher gloss finish that in most scenarios should be acceptable. But it can't, again, it can't be acceptable in all scenarios or the white product below it wouldn't exist and the blue product above it wouldn't exist. But this is your mid-range single stage abrasive, if you like. They're a lot nicer to buff. They're a little bit smoother to work. And, and you know, it's a mid-range type of product. Now, this is the thing that interests me. In the DA Fine Kit, you also get a fine cut or medium wool polishing pad and the infamous Roops yellow foam pad. Um, now, historically I mentioned that wool, you don't tend to use it to give you a final finish because of hazing that it can introduce. But this is a very fine wool that's supposed to be able to deliver you a final finish on most applications. And we're gonna be testing that in a second on very, very soft paint. And I'm really interested to see what this wool pad can do. So there's your two standard pads, 125 mil, five inch fitment, or you can get them for the six inch fitment or the 180 mil on the surface size. You also get a color coded green, uh, green <laughs> yellow microfiber cloth for removing that and I've got the three uh, Rupes Claw, so I've got three of them now, in the kit as well, because it has the free gift sticker on it. And finally, guys, right down at the finishing end of the spectrum, you have the, the Ultra Fine, or the white kit, and in there you get a litre of their pure finishing abrasive. So again, all these abrasives, are they don't contain any bespoke fillers or waxes or sealants. They're pure paint correction tools and after you've used them your aim is to remove the polish from the surface degrease and then apply the protection of choice note rupes also have a product called uno protect which is an all-in-one so if you want to finish out and add protection at the same time so you're not repeating it you could look at that product as well i'll pick some up later on and check that out um, so that's the liter of the braces and with the uno fine kit or the you know pure the ultra finishing there is no wool you just get two soft mega soft mega small pores if you like very nice quality finishing pads and you get a thicker softer cloth for that final wipe down where you're 
you don't need to buff as hard and you're buffing gently. You don't want to, any risk of introducing marring when you're on that final <laughs> polishing set. You're looking for the flawless finish at that particular point. And in my particular box as well, I got the, um, the free gift. So that essentially is the kits, guys. Now, it's my understanding that these are diminishing abrasive technology. So they start out, they deliver more cut at the start and then they break down um, to give you a higher gloss. And that's why more relevant perhaps to the aggressive products down here where historically heavy cutting compounds um, sacrificed gloss and a finish, you know, but the diminishing abrasive technology allows them to deliver the cut at the start, but still break down and give you a higher gloss. So you're closer to a final finish and the jump from the aggressive to the finished article is less. So that is the three kits, what you're getting. Now I want to talk about pricing. Next up, prices. Pay attention, 007. Now, before I did this video, I went online, looked for prices, and this is what I found. Prices always vary, so shop around to find the best price, as always. Now, this section here is the kits. Now, we're interested in this column primarily, which are 125 mil fitment kits, which I've called five inch kits but Rupes called that 150 mil kits, okay? Because that's the footprint size. Now the blue coarse five inch kit, 50 pounds. The yellow fine, 46 pounds. And the white ultra fine kit, 37 pounds. And you can see the larger size fitments, there's typically a pound difference. So you're not paying much extra to get the bigger pads. So there's your kit prices. Now, to give you some more context, here's the pure abrasive. So if you just want the polish and nothing else, the blue coarse compound is £38.95. The yellow fine one is £33.95. And the white ultra fine is £26.95. Now you can see this red arrow here. Recently we did a comparison of 13 um, respected market leading detailing single stage abrasives mid range. And the average price per litre was £37.38. And to give you some context, the Rupes equivalent product is £33.95, which is well below market average, which is a great price. So that gives us some context. Next up, you try the kits to see if you like wool or, you know, to, to demo them if you like. But if you then go on and decide you want to use those systems going forwards, there's bundles of one litre of product and four pads, which guys at home and professionals will be interested in the bundles because you'll save money. So this is for five inch as well. I couldn't find any six inch ones, but we know typically it's gonna be a tiny little bit extra, like an extra pound or something like that. So shop around. The blue coarse bundle of one liter abrasive and four pads, 60 pounds. The yellow, 55 pounds. And the ultra fine white, 48 pounds. Now, if we go to the yellow, we know that the abrasive is worth about 34 pounds. So that gives us 21 pounds for four pads. Um, so we're really, in that bundle, you're only paying about five or six pound per pad. So um, again, there's some fantastic value to be had in these bundles going forward. Now, talking about pads only, because that's good consumer information, you might, might want to buy the polish only, or the pads only. The foam pads, blue, yellow, or white, are seven pounds for three inch fitment, eight pounds roughly for five inch fitment, and nine pounds for the six inch fitment, and if you want to try out those wall pads, you decide you like those and you want to buy those going forward, they're only available in the coarse blue or the medium wool yellow. And they cost £9 for the 3 inch, £13 for the 5 inch and £14 for the 6 inch. So the wall pads typically are a little bit more expensive. But taking away from this, for European made pads, these prices are very strong as well. So this is a good bit of consumer information here, guys. Take a look at that and compare it perhaps to what you're using or what you're considering using, because comparing prices is always very, very useful. Next up, we're gonna be looking at how the various pads and abrasives appear under the Gonio photometer with gloss and haze readings. And we'll also be testing how well they can cut out heavy sandy marks, P1000, through to medium sandy marks, P2000, all the way down to finer sandy marks, the P3000. So with this test, we try and be consistent and run all of the different abrasives and pad combos through the same process. 
No, these test cycles are not trying to maximize the efficiency of these products or get the best results. We're just trying to perform a consistent set of tests so we can benchmark the products against each other. Very important. So we do our best to prime these pads in an appropriate manner for the format, whether it's wool or foam. Spread the product out on a low speed over our test panel and then machine polish at speed 4.5 using consistent pressure for 60 seconds. So this is just to give you an idea of what we're doing. All the footage is spread up. Um, once we finish polishing each section, when we take the color coded designated cloth and use that to remove the polish. And um, we also do a final panel wipe, wipe down at the end to make sure we've removed all of the product. We then take our Rowpoint IQ Gonio photometer reading and in that section between the yellow lines we're away from the sanding marks and that's where we're testing the gloss. So we take five readings and take the average 20 degree which is the high gloss reading, the average haze reading and the average R spec which is a fine surface sensitive reading of gloss as well. And we repeat the readings for every section of the panel for all of the different pads and abrasive combos. Comparing cutting performance. Blue coarse wool. P1000 gone. P2000 gone. P3000 going. That's a 60 second set. So obviously you can get rid of this with more working. It's just allowing us to compare the different formats. Blue foam coarse. P3000, nearly gone, 2000, not gone, 3000, not gone. Yellow wool, fine. It's the middle I'm looking at. That's done though, isn't it, really? As you go to the edges, you can see them where, they, where there's a bit of lift. But that's, that's done that. Uh, nearly gone, but not complete. And then the 1000 sandy marks are still there yellow foam fine well, it's done the 3000 nearly done the 2000 and not done the 1000 and then the white ultra fine um, we've not quite done the 3000 we've not done the 2000 and obviously not done the 3000 so that's a comparison let's just come back and get this on focus on cutting and you can say that the wool, obviously the blue blue wool over here seems to do the best at cutting out sanding marks. Um, but the yellow wool had some impressive results as well, perhaps even outperformed the foam. So we've learned something about cutting there that wool is definitely great at removing deep defects or sanding marks in particular. Next up, surface appearance using our Rowpoint IQ Gonio photometer to measure it. This is high gloss reading. The blue coarse wool gave us the lowest gloss and the highest haze. So that's the most amount of haze. We want that reading to be low. And that's a fine surface sensitive reading on gloss. So you can take this as the R spec as another gloss reading. So these are the worst surface appearance readings in the test. So that's the downside of the wool. And if we actually look at this area here where we're measuring the gloss, you can probably even see in the camera Let's get a nice sharp focus. It's a hazy finish with some fine machine marring on this soft paint. So that's the downside of wool. This is a product that you use to remove clear coat reasonably rapidly and give you a finish which is going to then need to be refined out later on. Next up, the blue coarse foam. Slightly higher gloss levels, significantly lower haze, so the foam is not introducing the same amount of haze as the wool, and slightly improved R spec. It also has the machine marring, and it's not a crystal clear, haze free 
finish. Um, so similar thing to the wool. You would say, well, it's why use the wool if you're getting way less haze and gloss? Well, you're not too worried about the surface appearance here. Um, you know, so it's all about personal preference. The wool is a bit smoother to use, but the foam is going to haze up the paint less. It's a bit stiffer, the foam, as well. You get a bit more vibration coming through the machine, and it's probably easier to sling with the, uh, the stiff foam pad. Now we go on to the yellow wool. Um, so with the fine abrasive, a much more improved gloss reading, lower haze reading. Now is that the wool or is that the fine abrasive? We don't know, but this is just the surface appearance, so that's pretty impressive for wool. And a very close aspect to the gloss reading. And if we look at this, we've got a much better level of finish here. There is, if I get that focus right, just some fine machine marring in this soft paint. So it's not a flawless finish, but it's very good. Now, we go over to the yellow foam, fine. And we get even better surface appearance data. Higher gloss, virtually no haze, that's fantastic. And uh, similar R spec. And if we look at the finish, that is a really good finish, really good. Um, this is very soft paint as well, very hard to finish out and we were, you would even change your technique whereas I was keeping my technique consistent for this comparison but that is a phenomenal um, thing that that foam pad is giving you. So foam is very good at finishing. And finally guys, the ultra white finishing product. Now the gloss is more or less the same as the yellow but the haze is incremented and so is the R spec. And interestingly if I look at the finish I mean, it's, look at the reflection. That's what I'm trying to show you. The reflection is crystal clear and the Gonio photo, photometer supports that. But the defects that are in there, I believe that the fine product hasn't been able to take out the scratches that were in this soft paint already prior to polishing it. So this really is an out and out glossing product that's not gonna be able to remove swirls. So you'd use this on very soft paintwork when you've got a good level of defect removal. So very interesting data. There's some final summaries on this, guys, and some things to get thinking about. Now, the star performers, in terms of cutting, it's clearly the wool. But the compromise is the level of finish is not as good. Now, should you just cut with the foam, you get quite a lot less cut pound for pound. You can obviously increase your pressure, change your technique. You've still got a good level of cut there. Is the fact that you get a better finish desirable to you or does it not matter because you're still going to want to finish this product off to get those gloss levels up to where we are down here? So really on paper the wool is perhaps the star performer if you're doing a two-stage process. What about these ones down here? The yellow wool impressed me with the level of cut. Really good level of cut perhaps even outperforming the blue foam pad but the payoff there over its foam counterpart using the same abrasive is increased haze slightly. So if you're using single stage and it's a softer paint where you're more worried about finish, the foam might be the way to go. Or if it's a harder paintwork application, you're concentrating more on maximizing defect removal within that single set, then the wool, the Rupes wool, is a pretty impressive option. And this product over here very, very low cut finishing product. You need to get to a stage where most of your defect removal and swirls are gone and you just have machine marring and haze and then you can use that. But what I've learned about this is you probably wouldn't use this for a single stage application. That's an out and out ultra fine, like it says, finishing product. So the yellow foam perhaps is the star performer for giving us a really high level of finish in a single hit and a good level of um, cut with no machine marring or minimal machine marring. So there is some data that we can only really get because of the row point IQ. And also this data is subject to trying to put it through a test cycle where we repeat, you know, the similar process and that doesn't capture how you would vary your technique to cope with delivering a finish on a real car as opposed to a test. So bear that in mind and um, hopefully that's some really useful data for you. So let's come out of this now. So that's my little testing finish, guys. And what have I learned from this? 
I've learned that wool would be a viable option for me when I need to cut paint and I want to maximise the amount of cut that I can do in one particular set where I know I'm going to be fish finishing it out. I've always kind of disregarded wool because of the management of those pads, um, the accumulation of build up of, of polish in the pad gets harder to manage and you do need to swap out a bit more. We've talked about pros and cons but it's got me thinking that I need to explore wool more and I'm really impressed with the finish that the fine abrasive paired up with the yellow foam pad can give. And the Rupes yellow pad is like a stalwart. It's heavily used up and down the country. And the reason being is it can, with a single hit application, deliver you a very high gloss finish and a good level of defect removal. So for guys at home that want to keep it very, very simple, John, I want to polish my car you know, I've got normal medium paint. It's in okay condition. I want to take away some swirls and give myself a really nice glossy finish. Then the yellow kit and the foam pad perhaps is the one you want to go for. But if you buy the kit, have a go with the wool pad and form your own opinion. Um, you might prefer the wool. And if it's defect removal you're leaning to on your paint, the wool is going to outperform the foam. This is the fascinating thing with doing this sort of testing and exploring it. Um, you put the work in and you'll get the benefits. The other thing I want to take away from this, which has got nothing to do with the DA kits, and that is that the Rupes uh, LHR 15 Mark III is one hell of a powerful dual action polisher, especially when you get it above um, speed setting four on that machine, there is a hell of a lot of power there, and that's quite nice. <laughs> so overall guys, I've had a lot of fun. I'm gonna wrap up this video now and go to the summary. We always try and put a summary in at the end of these videos, guys. The thing I want to take away from this is if you're new to detailing, historically, Rupes will cater for the professionals more. But this DA set of kits takes away a lot of the complexity around what you should use when you're starting out. So that's one advantage. It also allows you to try some of the different formats, the polishing formats, especially the wool versus the foam pads, which is something you might not have tried. And there's advantages and disadvantages is to each. And you'll each have your own preference. So that's why it's nice to be able to try it in the kits. You've also got the microfiber um, cloths teamed up with it and the abrasives teamed up to the pads. Um, and finally, another finally, <laughs> is as well as the abrasives being high quality and the pads being high quality, the price of these is really, really strong, which is something I always like. So thank you very much for watching. Put your thoughts in the comments as always, because that makes interesting readings. And uh, that's it for this one, guys. Take care and I'll see you soon.